Hey guys, Ron here, and a while back I made a video about all the Pokemon who are constantly in pain. It kinda made people sad, but it also made people happy that there are a few Pokemon that they can relate to. And even if you're in pain, it's always good to appreciate the good aspects of your life. But if that's also tough, maybe learning that some of your favorite Pokemon are actually super happy and rarely in any sort of pain will make you feel better. So I split this video into four categories, Pokemon who are literally never in pain, Pokemon who could be slightly hurt but are virtually indestructible, Pokemon with exceptional armor, and Pokemon who are just like any other Pokemon but have some sort of special immunity or resistance. Of course, I may miss a few, but be kind to me and we'll have a good time. Let's begin with the group of Pokemon who are literally painless, based on the info I've gathered of course. The most obvious answer is Slowbro. While Slowpokes are known to have a delayed response to any sort of feeling, they still feel pain. It just takes 5 seconds to reach their brain. But Slowbro has lost the capacity to feel any pain as a result of Shelder's poison. It's constantly in a trance, so it pays no mind to the hardships of life either. Slowbro is the ultimate example of what I'm trying to illustrate in this video, but I think I came up with quite a few more cases. I didn't even have to look outside the Slowpoke family. Slow Slowking is here too. Of course, the same pain relieving venom that is injected into Slowbro runs through Slowking's veins and directly into its brain, unlocking this boy's superior intellect and psychic powers. So not only is it physically fine, Slowking is never stressed. While Slowbro is constantly in a trance, Slowking is always thinking. It loves to learn and it loves life. Now while Porygon can worry, it doesn't feel physical pain. It has self-awareness and emotions since it is sentient, but considering it's made entirely of programming code, it simply can't be under physical discomfort. It can be distressed since it can input negative data, but this thing doesn't have nerves, and that's the common thing among the following Pokemon. Claydol is another man-made Pokemon. Created in ancient times out of clay, this Pokemon was exposed to a mysterious ray of light and now goes around shooting laser beams out of its hands. It even creates a psychic shield around itself to prevent rain from melting its body, so while it's totally vulnerable, it wouldn't feel pain if it were to melt, cause dolls made out of clay have no nerves. A much more epic example of Claydol's lore is found in the Regis. Regigigas created the three out of an icy mountain, magma, and some rocks. So yeah, there's a 100% chance these things have no nerves. So unlike Porygon, I'm not sure they have any emotions or will, so they may be the number one example for lack of physical and emotional pain. Not only that, the Pokedex goes into extreme detail about their endurance. Regice can't be melted, Registeel can't be scratched, and Regirock, well, Regirock can be crumbled into pieces, but it will just pick up any old rock and replace its damaged body parts. These things are hardcore and have some of the best defense in the game, so they kind of fit in every category in this video. But there are actually more examples just like the Regis, some of which you may be surprised to hear. Glalie's body is actually made of rock, that's what those black parts are. To protect its rock hide, which isn't as durable as steel or diamond, it encases its body in ice. Legends say it's just a ghost that entered a boulder, and if so, yeah, this thing doesn't have any nerves. But if we ignore this myth and consider it to be a living, naturally made creature, its entire body is made of rock and ice, so any pain it will ever feel must be internal. Therefore, no outside source can inflict pain via impact, unless of course we're talking about a nuclear bomb. But assume that all the Pokemon on this list would die in a nuclear blast, unless I say so. Except for Metagross. The Metagross line is pretty sentient, so I'm sure insulting it would bring great stress. But if Metang can collide with a jet and not be damaged or scratched in the slightest, I have a feeling that Metagross doesn't feel any pain, because even though its skin may not be the hardest in the Pokemon universe, it definitely absorbs impact on a super high level, possibly using psychic powers. Now Tyranitar is literally the armor Pokemon, its body can't be harmed by any sort of attack, and that's why it's so eager to rampage and challenge enemies. This isn't a theory by the way. The Pokedex gives me perfect material, so I took it. I'm not gonna complain. But the following is only a theory, wrapped in another theory. Wobbuffet is known to do anything it takes to protect its tail. You know, the tail with eyes. Since it's inclined to let its blue face get pummeled, it's speculated that the tail is the true Wobbuffet, and the rest of its body is a decoy. So this Pokemon's habits could demonstrate the possible fact that this thing feels no pain, while this thing does. Cryogonal is another example of a Pokemon composed of ice. It's just a less interesting Regice, and its high special defense makes me believe that it too doesn't easily melt. But regardless, this creature has no nervous system. They're literally formed in snowstorms and don't reproduce. Not really much to live for honestly, but I don't think Cryogonal is aware of how much its life sucks. Vanillite on the other hand, while also entirely composed of ice, has a good outlook on life. You can't tell me that this thing isn't having a good time. It's pretty clear that this Pokemon has positive emotions and has no nerves, so it's safe to assume that it also feels no pain. Except for embarrassment. But the next Pokemon is never embarrassed, cause it's always asleep. Cosmoem is encased in a sturdy shell for 10 levels, so while it's an underwhelming explanation, it technically isn't feeling anything, so I had to 
to mention it. Pomala, on the other hand, is tricky. It's always asleep and won't wake up even when attacked. We simply don't know if pain in the real world translates to pain in Komala's dreams. If anything, it's here because it definitely is immune to small amounts of pain. The next two are wonderful exceptions. They're ghosts. Aegislash and Shedinja are the only ghost types here. But then you may ask, why aren't all the ghost types here? They definitely don't have intact nerves. True Green 7? More like False Green 7, am I, am I right, ladies? Well, here's the thing. Every other ghost type Pokemon has some sort of vulnerable life force that if damaged or harmed can lead to pain. For example, Chandelure's flames are its life force. If its flames were put in jeopardy, it will not feel good. Shred Delmize's seaweed, it will be mad. Throw a bayonet on a wall, it'll get hurt. Slap a Cofagrigus on its arm, it'll reel back. Even Golurk, who has a shell, doesn't have a good time when its seal is broken and its life energy goes out of control, but Shedinja is explicitly said to never react to stimuli. It doesn't have any visible life force that needs protecting, like Cofagrigus does, and even if it did, its shell is pretty hard. It's not even a shell. The husk is the ghost. It's not a vulnerable spirit covered in a protective layer, like Mimikyu. And Aegislash doesn't have any ghostly aura that needs protecting either. It's a ghost sword, and is as sturdy as a ghost sword would be. So you'll never be able to come in contact with its physical soul like you would on a Trevenant, whose ghostly spirit is showing, and you wouldn't be able to easily break it like a Palisand. Now it's time for the Pokemon who could totally feel some degree of pain, but are virtually indestructible for various reasons. Cloyster is a very good example of this because a lot of these Pokemon are here because the Pokedex explicitly states that the shell or armor of these Pokemon is as hard as or harder than diamond. That's kind of the standard for indestructible objects. Cloyster's shell is hard enough to survive a bomb. The only reason it's not in the painless section is that if its shell was open and you gave its face a good old slap, I'm sure it'll hurt. Steelix is another example of a Pokemon who is as hard as diamond. Now, obviously if a body was that hard, nothing would get through it. But unlike Cloyster, whose shell can encompass all of its weak spots, Steelix is harder than diamond skin, isn't a shell, and therefore can't ever protect its eyes or mouth. So it could feel pain, but I'd honestly put it in the previous category if I didn't know people would complain that he's not technically painless. Regardless, he's the most fortified out of any Pokemon without a shell the hardest skin in the Pokemon universe. Now, Electrode explodes. It, it's what it does. You're probably thinking that exploding is like the last thing you want to do and is kind of the opposite of something indestructible. But that's the thing. It explodes and is completely fine. It even explodes when it's bored. Electrode thinks exploding is fun. It laughs at you for having a mortal shell. Unlike Electrode, who may or may not feel pain when exploding. But the facts are, it can survive explosions. Rhydon could have been in the next category, but it's special. It's stated and shown how Rhydon can survive in 3,600 degree lava. Its hide doesn't just protect it from heat, it also makes it insensitive. But since it's possible that actual precision impacts could harm it, this beast could feel pain. It would have made the painless category if it had more info, so I wouldn't say you were misinformed if you went around shouting from the rooftops, Hey everybody, Rhydon is painless! Fortress's shell is so impenetrable that nobody knows what it looks like inside. Now while we know that an impact won't damage its shell, I'm pretty sure these bugs feel pain when exposed to high temperatures. Shuckle is another shelled bug type, and since it has the highest defense in the game, by definition, this Pokemon's shell is the most resistant to assault than any other Pokemon, and that's a good thing. Carbink is kinda made of diamonds, they can withstand high temperature and pressure and live for millions of years, so they're pretty healthy as well. Of course, they can feel pain, but barely anything can kill them. The mutated Carbink Diancy is here too, for the same reason. Golisopod is just another example of a Pokemon whose shell is harder than diamonds, you know what that means by now. And Groudon Done, I mean, I'm not gonna even explain that. I'm, a I'm actually super serious. Find out yourself. Finally, we can move on to the second to last category, Pokemon with exceptional armor. Sure, these Pokemon can feel pain, but only by things that would kill the average Pokemon. Bastiodon was almost gonna make the previous group of pokes, but it kinda has to face the impending danger in order to resist it. If you attack it from behind, it would get hurt. Okay, so Nidoking and Nidoqueen are described as thick. They're just all around thick. Thick arms, thick legs, and god does the Pokedex like talking about Nidoking King's thick tail. Sure, Golem has a nice rock shell, but it's just normal rock. Of course, stone is a pretty good defense. If it worked for the Chinese, it worked for me, but it ain't no diamond. However, if we're gonna use diamond as the standard of armor, we'd have like five Pokemon here. I definitely wouldn't be able to make this video longer than 10 minutes, and what's the point of that? Agron is probably number one in this category, but it isn't in the invulnerable group because it's pretty clearly stated that its armor cracks and scratches. It's actually proud of its dents and bruises, so maybe it ain't afraid of pain. While Rain's thick blubber makes enemy attacks bounce off harmlessly, and I mean that's the definition of this category right here. But I'm sure a good old knife would do the trick, but slapping the blubber's belly would probably just tickle. Bisharp is heavily armored, but nowhere do we get 
get definitive info on the armor's integrity and resistance. I'm just gonna assume that it's as good as a knight's armor, and that ain't bad, but I'm pretty sure soldiers get hurt. However, a Pokemon battle is probably a breeze for Bisharp, so you shouldn't feel guilty to let it fight. And now we have Avalon. Its ice is thick, cold and sturdy, basically impenetrable, but I'm sure if you were able to attack it with a bulldozer or a bazooka, this thing would get damaged. But he'll live. This whole category is really for Pokemon who wouldn't feel pain during an average Pokemon fight, but definitely would during an apocalyptic war. And the final category is Pokemon who probably feel pain just as much as the next Pokemon, but have special defenses or resistances to situations in which most Pokemon would feel pain. Muck can easily be harmed, but one sense that you can't assault a Muck with is smell. Unlike any other Pokemon, a bad stench won't harm Muck. Magikarp is easily murderable, but this Pokemon has lasted for so long, even though it's so weak, because they can live in any sort of water. Polluted, muddy, salt or fresh, most water types can't do that. And they reproduce like crazy, but that's th that's none of your business. Snorlax can easily be scratched, but one huge immunity it has is to food poisoning. It can literally eat anything. It never has tummy aches, and that just makes for a happy Pokemon. Believe me, 90% of the pain I experience is stomach aches. Toxapex could be harmed, just not easily. You gotta go through spiky hell to give this Pokemon a good old slap in the face for disrespecting your mother. I'm not saying it doesn't feel pain, it just rarely does because nobody wants to get in its face. Quagsire is super oblivious and carefree. If it bumps its head while swimming, it literally does not care. That makes it pretty much impervious to minor forms of pain, and that's very appropriate for this video. Ludicolo is also carefree. While it probably can feel the same amount of pain as a human, one thing it has over us is its ability to rarely be stressed. Anxiety isn't a thing in the Ludicolo community, but I hope you've gotten some relief knowing that some of your favorite Pokemon have a painless existence. So like the video if you feel better, and subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to check out the description for the music I used, the t-shirts I made for you guys, my Patreon, or click the join button to get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, or my private discord. I'll see you guys very soon.